So nighttime had fallen, and it was a perfect moment to bring Blackie and Kitty in the city. I wasn't sure yet how Craddock would do it, but she'd assured me she'd made sure the guards weren't an issue, and the only thing I had to do was open the gates. It worked, and a little while later we were trying to get Blackie inside of a building. Turned out she was a bit too big for the door. This is Nidak, my adventure, written down in a better way than I can tell it. Episode 30. Skipping is easy. Coming! Blackie's voice in Nidak's head loosened up a knot between her shoulder blades. She glanced around the corner of the alleyway she was in, towards the city's main gate. The lanterns around it gave enough light to see the two guards standing near the guard post at the bottom. The two towers next to the gate each had one guard at the top. Says Crowdeck, ready get. The guards on the ground turned their heads in the same direction as synchronized as if rehearsed, then walked away from their post, oblivious of anything else but the need to investigate. Before the top guards noticed the absence of their fellows, both of them slumped down. Neda ran towards the gate. She turned the wheel connected to the chain to lift the two heavy beams. Once they were released from their supports and floated in front of the gate, she tucked the tow chain, a short length of chain attached to the bottom beam. The beams moved out of the way. She unbolted the five heavy locks while wondering why it needed such a heavy security. When she swung open the gates, a welcome meow was the first thing she heard followed by Kitty jumping on her shoulder. A serious-looking Craddock nodded at her. Well done. Come, let's get this done. My need can only do so much. I'm stretching it thin already. Blackie, make them wake up in two hours. That should be enough to get into the building and sneak back out. A vague outline of a shadow moved in the lantern light. A thin squeak of escaping air filled the otherwise silent night. How did she know she could adjust her wake of farts? Nidak mumbled, partly to herself, partly to Crydek. I did it. It was a good guess. How did you cloak her? Are we hidden too? No. Only her. If anyone were to look out and see us walking about, it wouldn't raise that much suspicion. A dragon is a completely different thing. I enveloped her in a cloud of need. It makes anyone looking in her direction feel the need to see a shadow instead of a dragon. It's one of the more complex uses of my line. This way. Mind manipulation? Huh. Nedak followed her aunt into the city, baffled by the options of the line. She assumed all the lines had such a broad array of uses. If everything went to plan, she'd have access to all those different lines soon. She'd really be all powerful. It scared her to think about. She'd have to somehow learn about them all. But if she were to fail? The people who controlled Wani were up to no good. She remembered what the Zlurp had said. They want to conquer Earth. With all that power there's a good chance they'd be able to destroy it completely. This is one of our stockhouses. Craddock's voice flustered Nadak, 
She didn't know how long they'd been walking, so caught up in her thoughts she'd been. She stopped next to her aunt, in front of a large building. Craddock opened up a double door. Blackie might have to squeeze a little bit, but once through the doors, she should have plenty of space to stretch out. The stockhouse is empty right now because we have been wanting to rebuild the interior. We have a big plan, providing indoor rooms for several different shops. People would be able to come here on bad weather days and do all their shopping in a controlled environment without getting wet or cold. It was pitch dark inside. The streets didn't have lanterns or any other lighting. The two moons, the smallest one full, the other half full, gave enough light to see by on the streets, but didn't reach inside of the building. The sound of flint and steel was followed by a small bright flash and the steady flame of an oil lamp. Craddock must have dropped her need around Blackie because she appeared like a black dragon-shaped void. The void filled the doorway, trying to push in. Blackie spoke to Nedek, making her gasp. <gasps> what about food and water? Oh, and even more important, poo and pee. I can't believe I didn't think of that before. Nedek rubbed her forehead in annoyance. Don't worry, I did. One of the best features of this building is that it's built around a well. See? She walked towards the middle of the open space. There was indeed a pool of water. We want to make this into a key feature in the middle of the shop house, integrated with sculptures and the like. But that's not important now. The well is never ending, so there's your dragon's water. I'll have one of my city servants bring food daily and carry off the bodily waste. Neda gaped at her. This plan felt foolish. She felt foolish. She didn't want Black to be locked up like this, even if it was only for a long week. She turned to face Blackie, which made her aware of the sound of creaking wood reverberating in the otherwise silent night. Shh, Blackie, hush! Blackie stopped wriggling. Fit not. Her voice was petulant and slightly panicked in Nedek's head. Kitty yawned, jumped off Nedek's shoulder, and had butted Blackie's chin. He swooned down and rolled onto his back, playfully touching the chin with all his toe beans. Balls, Craddock, the doorway's too small. We'll have to hide her outside after all. I don't think it would have worked to keep her here anyway. Someone bringing a load of food and removing massive piles of dung every day would be too conspicuous. Craddock shook her head before Nadak finished the sentence. I told you before, not an option. Our home will get invaded soon, and once Birch gets out, which it probably already has, every area of the forest will be surged. She frowned at Nadak. Just skip her inside. What a fool I am. We could have done this all along. I can do that? How else did you skip to our home? Of course you can do that. She grabbed Nedek by the shoulders, but released immediately. I don't have time to explain everything, so I'll try to make it quick. 
Whenever I had someone slap you, I reached beyond realms to grab the closest person near you. It's complicated, but let's say it's all to do with fine-tuning my need. I transferred the need of the task I had for you to you, right at the time I made the person slap you. That's how you could feel where to go and what to do. You injected me with the need of the task? Nedak was incredulous. It sounded complicated. There should have been an easier way. Like, just telling the truth? Something like that, yes. It, it doesn't matter. Point of it all is, with the task ahead of you, you knew where to skip. We made you believe that's the only way you could skip from Earth to here and back. But your options are endless. I won't get into it now. I'm sure the box your parents left has more answers than I could ever give you. Have you opened it yet? Yes, but it was too random. And I guess perhaps I wanted to take a quick nap which accidentally turned into a very long nap. Anyway, Patat is having a look at the box contents right now. He asked if he could and I said it was alright. He might be able to order everything in rank of what's most important to know. Nedak's mind spun while she talked. She could skip everywhere? To soften the feeling of being overwhelmed, she thought back to what Patat had looked like when releasing him from the chest which brought him into the city as part of her baggage. That had been funny. <laughs> How did I skip to your home? I had Patat slap me because I thought that's how I'd know where to skip to, and it worked. But it doesn't feel like that should have worked with what you just told me. I can't be certain. Perhaps you knew all along and it gave you the confidence you needed. You'd skipped many times to that same place, so it is ingrained in you. Now, enough talking. Let's get this beast inside. Let her touch you. You're able to transport others without touching and even without skipping yourself. But it's not a good idea to try it now. Activate your skip and keep the middle of the building firm in your mind. Blackie looked miserable. Her head, neck and shoulders were inside. The rest seemed really stuck. Nedak lifted Kitty up, packed him on the head and moved him away. There was no need for him to skip along. No need to take the risk. Kitty sauntered over to a pile of sand in a corner and started digging. Nedak chuckled and got in position. She touched her foot against Plucky's snout and almost jumped when something wet touched her leg. Really? She sent to the dragon. Sure be. Want not you lose me. Blackie held her tongue firmly in place, wrapped around Nadak's leg. Hands on knees, Nadak began the process, slamming her bent knees together while crossing her hands. She felt the energy build up. She focused on the spot in front of her, the center of the building next to the pool. They skipped. You have been listening to Nedek, Chapter 30, Skipping is Easy. Narrated, adventured and lived through by myself, Nedek. Written in a better way than I can tell it, by Astrid Jeff. Don't go just yet. We've got bloopers coming up. Find us on Twitter at Astrid Jeff and at Nedek and Kitty. 
If you like this show and would like to support it, a good way to do that is share it around to everyone you know. An even better way is to rate and review it on iTunes or whichever podcatcher you use. Blackie's voice in Nelex had loosened up a knot between her shoulder blades. She glanced around the corner. Is that Waffle? Waffle, was it you? The two towers next to the gate each had one guard at the tower. At the what? The towers had a guard at the tower. That isn't right. They walked away from their post. Oblivious. Ob oblivious. She turned the wheel connecting. Connecting? Did I even edit this? Yes, I did. I don't know what I'm doing. She unbolted the hair. She assumed all the lines had such a broad. She assumed all the lines had such a broad. Broad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, kitty, you're so cute. Whenever I had someone slap you, I reached beyond real, real realms. I'm sure the box your parents held. You might be able to order everything in rank of what's more important. Imposter. What the fuck? But it's not a good idea to. Oh, <laughs> fuck's sake. Ah, <sighs> blaggy, blaggy, blaggy. <laughs>